Hello and welcome to Nick Reviews Things from the 90s and occasionally the 80s. Today we're going to talk about something from the late 80s, specifically 1987, and we're not talking about me. Today we're going to talk about the Koosh Ball. Koosh. Koosh Balls somehow managed to be a huge part of my childhood. They were everywhere. We had them at home, they were at school, they were in like the principal's office, not that I ever went there. They were used on sports teams. They were all over TV, my friends had them. Koosh balls were everywhere, which is weird because it's just like this weird little rubber bandy thing. Invented in the late 80s by Steve Stillinger, this rubbery filamenty koosh ball hit shelves in 1987. He saw that his kids were having difficulty learning how to catch, so he decided to do something about it. Steve looked at why his kids were struggling to catch. So he tried out a few different things. He, he specifically looked at how a ball bounces when you catch it and, and how your, your grip works on a ball. And he wanted to do something that would make it a little bit easier for his kids to learn how to catch. You know, I have to wonder about the kids in this situation. When their dad suddenly released to the press that he, he created this thing so they could learn how to catch, I bet they got teased a lot. Oh man, you guys are so bad at catching that your dad had to invent something so that you could catch. Uh, Kids are cruel. The original thought came from a ball of rubber bands. The rubber itself and the texture of the ball with the extra bands on it made it easier to catch. See, I'm terrible at catching. Even I can do this. Like a ninja. Since this was such an amazing idea, Steve Stillinger and his brother-in-law, Mark Button, decided to quit their jobs and open their own toy company called Odds On Products. With a Z. Odds. O-D-D-Z. -O Odds On. Odds On Products. With an education background in product design, Steve Stillinger first marketed the Koosh Ball as a rubber spaghetti ball, and they started producing it out of a barn. Yeah, I guess rubber spaghetti ball isn't the most appealing name. Or maybe some kid tried to eat it. You never know. The name of the product actually came last. They did a series of tests and surveys, you know, polling the audience kind of thing, and they asked thousands of people what they thought the name of this fun little toy should be. They decided on the Koosh Ball. Now, nobody really knows where the Koosh name came from, but the theory is that it's the sound that it makes when it, you throw it. Koosh. 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 Here are a few things you may not know about the Koosh Ball. The filaments are called feelers. They actually started with over 200 different name options before they settled on Koosh. Placed end to end, the feelers on each three inch diameter standard Koosh ball stretch more than 300 feet. A classic standard Koosh ball has about 2,000, give or take, rubber filaments or feelers on them. One retailer on receiving an order of Koosh Balls, thought that the feelers were actually some kind of defect, so they started cutting them off. In 1989, two years after the Koosh Ball hit shelves, it officially got its own book, entitled The Official Koosh Book. In 1991, two years after the book was published, Koosh also got a comic book series with a new line of Koosh critters, I guess. Rosie O'Donnell used Koosh Balls regularly on her talk show, The Rosie O'Donnell Show. She used a slingshot, which is an accessory you could use that will fling a Koosh Ball into the audience. It was a big thing. And because of that, in 2001, a woman sued the producers of The Rosie O'Donnell Show when she was, and I quote, suddenly and without warning struck in the face by a hard object. They settled out of court. Stillinger and Button sold odds on products, including their $30 million a year moneymaker the Koosh. And in 1997, Hasbro bought the rights to Koosh and to produce it. And they're the ones that are currently making it. You can find a Koosh ball just like this one at most stores. And by most stores, I mean toy stores. Specifically toy stores, let's be honest. It will look something like this. So if you know someone who's having trouble learning how to catch, you know what to get them. All right, this has been Nick reviewing things from the 90s and sometimes the late 80s. If you like what you see, comment, like, and subscribe. Join me next time and hopefully we'll do something amazing.